Hi guys, so I just wanted to do a little follow-up video from my interview on the BBC this morning about NHS dentistry, um, about funding and access and whether there's a crisis. So I actually left the NHS about 18 months ago and the reason for that was because I wanted to provide more patient-focused care and I wanted to spend a little bit more time with my, my patients and provide some more comprehensive advanced treatment as well. Um, working in the NHS, I felt enormous pressure to hit targets and how NHS practices work, how the funding works, is each practice is allocated um, funding based on the need of the local population. Each practice has to achieve a certain number of units of dental activity or UDAs each year and it's up to the practices themselves to allocate those UDAs how they feel best for their patients. Now how dentists um, are remunerated for that is they receive a certain number of UDAs per course of treatment they complete. So what happens is um, if you do an examination um, or a cleaning or prevention, then you receive one UDA. For fillings, root canal treatments, extractions, you receive three UDAs. And for anything like crowns, bridges, dentures, anything that involves laboratory work, we receive 12 UDAs. So practices have to achieve their UDA target or very close to their target. Otherwise, they the money will be clawed back from them um, and they risk not receiving that funding again next year. The problem is that certain treatments require a lot of time um, and a lot of skill actually uh, to achieve those UDA. So for things like root canal treatments, they're very difficult procedure and it could take an hour or even two hours of a dentist's time to do a root canal treatment. Now if a patient also needs like five fillings, they still receive the same number of UDAs, so that's three. So a dentist would receive the same number of UDAs as doing one filling on a patient or a root canal filling and five fillings on one patient. So the time spent is a lot more but the number of units they receive is exactly the same. So you can see that if a dentist has to do a lot of these big courses of treatment um, that take a lot of time, they will be less able to see as many patients, which means that there will be limited access and resources for future new patients. Now, when I worked in NHS practice, we were the only one in the local area in about 20 or 30 miles that were accepting new patients. So I used to um, I used to work in Elland, so we used to get patients traveling from Bradford, from Leeds, who would come just because they could not access a local dentist. That just shows you how hard some people find it to access um, an NHS dentist. But when these people are finally able to access dentists, they may have not seen a dentist for many, many years. So they may have got a lot of dental problems that needs treating. And again, the dentist would only be remunerated for one course of treatment for, for that patient. So the patient will take up a lot of the dentist's time and resources. I have so many new patients like coming to the practice and then needing a lot of work doing. So that took up a lot of our time, which meant that our existing patients who needed treatments were finding they were waiting longer and longer for appointments. So sometimes like six weeks for appointments. So it comes to a point where you cannot take any more new patients, otherwise your existing patients are gonna suffer. So we have to close the books. And that's what happens to a lot of practices. So when the demand is really high and the practice can't cope, they, they can't accept any new patients. There's a lot of people who do book appointments who don't turn up for appointments. So those appointments are wasted. Those people who were waiting for appointments could have been seen. Um, if there was notice given, then they could have been rebooked, but a lot of people just purely don't show up. I think part of the problem of that is that people don't value dentistry. For some people, there's little incentive for them to actually attend the appointment. So if they're not in pain, they may not attend. Or if they don't have to pay for a treatment, they may not attend. Now, people who do pay for their treatment, they are actually subsidising the majority of the uh, NHS fee. So Although NHS charges for patients are rising each year, the practice doesn't actually receive any more money from the from the government. The patients are, end up paying more and more of of that fee. In some practices, around ninety percent of the actual fees is, is the patients are actually paying for it themselves. 
Um, so there's, there's massive underfunding in NHS dentistry. On top of that, there's rising overhead costs. So this, the cost of running the practice has increased massively. So with introduction of CQC, uh, which are the complaints that dentists have to follow, um, a lot of practices have had to introduce new measures to their practice. If some people have had to even renovate their practice. Some people have had to employ additional staff. And that's there is no additional funding for this. So dentists have had to fund all this from that same original funding that they received for, to, for their patients. So if a lot of money is spent on that, then there's something is going to compromise. So either the quality of the materials that they're buying or the number of staff they have. So I know loads of practices are short staffed um, or the time you spend with patients. So you may have to see a lot more patients to be able to achieve those targets. Dentists are under so much pressure and um, it's very hard to meet those targets sometimes. And you really don't want to risk losing the funding so you have to you do have to do whatever you can to to hit those targets um otherwise the the population will receive even less dental care than before I found it very hard to provide really good quality dental care spend a lot of time with my patients developing relationships with patients um in in that limited time i think there is a big problem um in nhs dentistry we need to focus more on prevention. A lot of these problems are preventable and patients themselves need to take some ownership as well of their disease. So they need to realise what it is they're doing that is contributing to the problem. I mean, we can't fix everything. We have to work with what we see and we can give you the advice, but you have to do the work yourself at home. Um, I mean, we can't go home and feed you or brush your teeth. Okay, so basically that's just my thoughts on the problem in NHS dentistry and why I left really. Um, so hopefully this, this has um, given you some insight into what it's like to be an NHS dentist and why sometimes if you go to your appointment you might feel a bit rushed or you don't have a lot of time spent on you. We all are trying our best um, to do what we can to help you but there is limited resources and limited time to spend with each patient. So thanks for watching. I really hope that you, this has been useful and has given you some insight. And I'd be really interested to hear your thoughts on um, your experiences of NHS dentistry. Um, if you think it's working, um, if you've had trouble accessing a dentist, and if you've had to resort to any, you know, extreme measures to, to see a dentist. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.